So uh, this is how to make uh, free phone calls, basically, uh, using the new technology that's being rolled out very rapidly without actually being evaluated by all of the telcos. Next slide. <laughs> Okay, uh, the agenda for the talk, um, which I came up with very rapidly at about 3 o'clock this morning, so I might not remember it too well, is an introduction where I will go over um, basically a little bit of background on voice over IP, which is probably unnecessary uh, given the technical crowd we have here. We will then do an overview of uh, voice over IP technology, particularly focusing on the protocols and um, how they're implemented and why they're not as secure as they should be. We'll look at the infrastructure, and then we'll look at security, which is the fun stuff, uh, where we go over several of the attacks that um, I've been developing over the last year. And if we can get internet access, then we actually have live demos. Ooh. We're going to hack Singapore for the Malaysians in the audience. <laughs> okay, voice over IP. There are good things, like... Oh, all right, I have to move. Okay, there's good things about voice over IP. Um, it's cheap, we all get cheap phone calls. That's very good. Uh, it's been exploding very rapidly. I remember in 2002 when I first started working on VoIP with Ophir, I used to make fun of him telling him that it would never catch on and uh, I guess I was wrong. But um, it's, it's grown very, very rapidly over the last year and it's going to probably continue to grow very, very rapidly, particularly because uh, mobile phone operators charge so much fucking money and uh, <laughs> internet telephony was going to um, do them pretty badly. One of the big problems is that uh, all of these telcos in a desperate bid to make money out of voice over IP are marrying the uh, PSTN, which is the Public Service Telephone Network, to the internet. And if you think about that for a minute, you'll realize what a bad idea it is. Uh, the internet is not trusted. Uh, if it were trusted, then we wouldn't have conferences like this. Um, the PSTN, on the other hand, is trusted. Uh, all of us have to rely on it to uh, do just about anything, like order food or <clears throat> stuff late at night. Um, <laughs> so we need the PSTN. And they're, they're breaking it, and it's, it's going to be very, very easy to break, and I'll show you how to do that. So one of the, the major problems is that it's been around for such a short period of time that the best practices are very, very immature. No one really knows what good voice over IP security looks like. So they just go and they buy a bunch of boxes from a bunch of vendors, plug everything in, hack it together until it works, and then leave it there and hope that no one knows how to hack it. And that was the case up until uh, 45 minutes from now. Um, the really good news for us is instead of cheap phone calls, we now get free anonymous phone calls. Okay, that's one better. Okay, VoIP overview. So, um, all right, this agenda clearly departs from the previous agenda, but that's A-OK. -okay. So we're going to look at the infrastructure, uh, what a voice over IP infrastructure looks like. We're going to look at the protocols that are used with the various elements of that infrastructure to communicate between each other. Um, we're going to look particularly at the, the two main types of protocols, which are signaling and media protocols. Uh, I'll go into their difference. And then the integration protocols, which are used to marry the voice over IP network to the PSTN. So, these are the bits of the infrastructure that are actually important. You have an actual telephone at one end, or a user agent. This is a mobile phone, um, at some point in the future, I hope. Or a soft phone, which is running on a PC, or it could be a hardware phone that supports uh, the protocols directly. It can even be a router, which does conversions from analog telephone lines to VoIP protocols, and then sends everything over DSL. Um, there's the internet technology, uh, which is then, like, whatever, the internet. Routers and DNS, those are the, the major pieces of uh, voice over IP technology that are used in terms of uh, internet specific technologies. And then the integration technologies are basically gateways. Uh, they're called gateways because they uh, act as gateways between the PSDN, which is a walled garden, and the internet, which is a wild, unkempt garden. And of course there's two types, the media and the signaling. So if we look at the protocols which are used to communicate between these various devices, we have um, the, the primary uh, sort of central theme is the separation of signaling and media. So media is actually everything that's voice traffic. 
uh, all of the, the actual content, like uh, in the future they expect to have video traffic, or uh, they're actually talking about text over IP, which I don't really understand how that's different from what we have now, but they, <laughs> they intend to have voice over IP, text over IP, and video over IP, and I believe they, they want text over IP because they think people are stupid and will stop using MSN for free and start paying for text messages over the internet. Um, there are a couple of competing standards in terms of the signaling protocols. The, the two primary ones um, are H323, which is very old, and SIP, which is not very old, but it's very big and cumbersome, um, though not quite as big and cumbersome as H323. Uh, SIP tends to be what's used in the new um, rollouts, whereas H323 tends to be uh, legacy software. Um, in theory, there's supposed to be a, a parity between the amount of H323 devices and SIP devices out there. Um, in the work that I've done, I have yet to encounter an H323 device. So I'm not sure how widespread it actually is anymore, given the rapid explosive growth of SIP-based devices over the last year or so. Um, the, the other big competition is between the H323-related Megaco, which is used for media integration between uh, media gateways, the PSTN, and the internet and MGCP, which is just a legacy piece of shit. Um, but it's, it's been around for long enough that it's, it's really entrenched itself in deeply. Um, there's also a bunch of proprietary stuff out there, such as Skype, which uh, a lot of you probably use. Um, I don't know much about it, no one really does, but they've now been bought by eBay, so there's that. Um, as I said, SIP is basically used for the new stuff, so if you're going to learn about voice over IP, learn about SIP. Okay, signaling protocols. Uh, as I mentioned, there's H323. Um, it's a very, very old standard. It was like, I have a CD-ROM that came with my Slackware uh, 7.0 or something like that, and it includes a bunch of documentation, and one of them is how to get voice over IP working with Linux, and it only talks about H323. So H323 has been around for a long time. Um, it's based on ASN1. Uh, for anyone who knows anything about security, the words ASN1 mean pain, uh, convoluted, complex, and basically broken. Um, it's most likely vulnerable. Right? Anyone who remembers uh, from a couple years ago all of the ASN1 bugs that were coming out, they should realize that no one's actually looked at any of the H323 implementations of those. So, broken. Um, if you want to develop attack tools, don't. Um, H323 only has the open H323 library, which is very, very painful to use. I spent two days working on it and then decided that I didn't want to know anything at all about H323. Um, it was just too painful. It's, it's not good for attack tool development. You have a very, very high level API that makes no sense. Okay, uh, this on the other hand is cool, SIP. Uh, SIP is the session initiation protocol. It's used to negotiate and set up sessions between uh, calling parties or calling agents. Um, it's defined in RFC 3261. There's a previous RFC, which I don't remember, but that's been obsoleted. Um, this RFC is pretty big. It's one of the largest RFCs that's been published and is in use. It's about 300 pages long. Um, most of it is crap. You can skip a huge amount of it. It just it explains everything in absolute verbose detail. Um, SIP will look very, very familiar to people, even if you've never seen it before, because it's based heavily on email and HTTP. So it's a text-based protocol. Um, it has error codes, such as 200 OK, or 404 not found, or 403 forbidden. Um, and it has a, a verb-based, or sorry, a method-based means of access, which looks a lot like get, or post, or put with HTTP. So, um, let's see transportation there. So SIP is basically a high-level uh, protocol which runs on top of underlying protocols. Uh, the general